All right, guys. So now that we've gone ahead and completely finished designing the website in Figma, it's, you know, it's kind of time to go ahead and send this off to the developer and explain to him on how this is going to be. Now, what we actually mentioned over here is obviously going to help him understand how it is, but sometimes you might have to sit with the developer and kind of take them through it if they don't understand. But this is sort of like a developer handoff document that we were kind of creating as we were designing it. Right now, the developer is going to have access only to the code. If you give him um, edit access, then he can edit your design, but you can give him access to uh, your Figma file without giving him the edit access. So if you click on share, um, you can see that you can copy and share the link and anybody, and you can choose whether the person will be able to edit or view it. So you can just say view access and he won't be able to edit it. And once you give him the view access, he'll be able to see all this information over here. And uh, depending on how he wants to use the code, he's going to toggle between CSS, iOS and Android. That's how it is. And if he selects any element, for example, you can see that it kind of gives all the information and the code that he needs. This is something that he's gonna take care of so you don't have to worry too much. But for you as a designer, there are a couple of things that you need to know is giving off assets such as images and icons. Like right? those are the primary things. Now icons technically have to be in SVG format. So for example, here we have the logo itself. Now this is in an SVG format. So make sure when you're designing your icons or an SVG, your icon should not be in PNG or JPEG formats. And once you come over here, you can obviously give these assets as SVG. So you can go to export and here you've got four options. You've got PNG, JPG, SVG, and PDF. And uh, for you can set to SVG and you can export the asset and share that with him. But if you're giving things like images, they either have to be in PNG or JPEG, right? So let's take an example. Now here, this is the image that we have. Now, ideally, you don't want to export this image. You want to export the original image, which is quite huge. So if I go ahead and duplicate this, all right, just to give you an example, and uh, let me come over here and you know set this to crop you can see that this image is actually bigger you know like this this is the actual image right this is the image that you want to give and also this is still not the correct one this image actually is supposed to be higher resolution so what you want to do is don't scale this image or export it at 2x try to give them this image itself which is the high resolution one which has not been cropped which has not been scaled down give them the original one because what we do is as designers is once we have a large image, we bring that to Figma and then we shrink it and we make it smaller to fit into our design. But when you're giving it to the developer, you always need a very high resolution. So give these separately. Now, if you do not have a very high resolution image and the only thing you have is, you know, the Im image at this size, then what you can do is you can click on export and then you can choose JPEG or PNG depending on that and make sure to export it at 2x because the retina displays are gonna shrink it down. So make sure to export it at 2X, right? So select JPEG and select 2X and export it. Now this is not the ideal option because what's gonna happen is that when you set it to 2X, this image is going to get exported at twice the pixels, which means that it is going to pixelate a little bit, which you do not want. So I highly recommend to always share the assets which are, you know, uh, high resolution, the original raw files, and that should be good to go. And that's pretty much it. All you have to do uh, to hand off your Figma file to the developers, right? All right, so what's next? Now I do have another course, which is the Mega Webflow course for designers. You can check all the link in the description and it's available on Skillshare and Udemy. Go ahead and check out the course where I'm gonna take this exact design that we created and I'm gonna build that inside Webflow. We're gonna add animations, interactions, make it responsive. And it's gonna be like a real website that you can actually share to people and they can see it on their devices. So it's gonna be pretty fun. So if you're definitely interested to learn Webflow, highly recommend checking out the course. So that's pretty much it for this entire course, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.